Welcome, welcome. Welcome to 2024. Are you happy? I'm so happy to be here once again. And I want to talk about local jobs, finding local jobs in your area. I want I was I was thinking about it. I think the last video I made, we talked about jobs and finding jobs. So I wanted to come out here and talk about how do we go about connecting? Is there enough jobs? Are you finding jobs easy in your local area or are you still traveling? Let's talk about it. goals for 2024 anyone I don't set goals anymore because if you don't know it and you will know it and some of you know it we don't stick to our goals I mean many years ago I remember doing all these things I'm gonna do this I'm not gonna do this and it never, I never followed through. And so this year I decided to not, I mean, I tell myself what I want to stop doing. And I'm like the type that if I'm going to stop something, like when I stop eating red meat, stop eating chicken, just go cold turkey. I don't talk about it. I just went cold turkey. And you find that when you try to set goals or you do anything, there's always some people coming in to distract you. Like I went on a travel assignment, people bringing chicken to me. Even when you said you don't eat that anymore. It's like they want you to be like them. Or they just, all of a sudden temptation comes to you. So I don't do that anymore. So I hope you had a wonderful holiday. So we're back. And the situation, I hope, will change in nursing and for the better, at least. I said earlier that I felt that 2023, the better half of 2023, went smoothly. But did you notice that? Towards the end of 2023, it's like an eruption. It's like the world just become negative and everybody's secrets or everybody's faults. And if you've been lying, it's like the universe just did a flip on us. And I'm not going to, I'm not the type of channel that talks about those things, but... It affects us all, regardless of if I don't talk about it. It just affects us because I was on the sideline just listening to what is going on in the world. And and it affects nursing, yes. You know, today is about jobs in your local area. And a lot of nurses are doing their own thing. I believe I was talking about in 2020, if nurses are still broke, some of us are in the middle of struggling, surviving. You know, nursing is a, a situation that if we're not clever or we did not learn from the start how to manage our money, our money will slip away. And a lot of us are at that stage right now. Most of us are doing our other things. Some of us have passive income. Some of us starting a new career. I met a nurse practitioner. She opened her clinic. And then another one in Mississippi, a travel nurse. She used to be a travel nurse. She became a nurse practitioner. And now she's doing drug testing. And that's her skills. So 
We are moving away from the bedside. <clears throat> what kind of nurse are you? Are you in that situation? Leave a comment. Subscribe if you haven't. So you you can bounce idea off of me and I can do some research and we can talk about it and so forth. Anyway, you would think that you were quicker to find jobs in your local area. They're ready to hire you. But I'm finding it very difficult, mainly because the salary that they're going to offer, and that's because if you've been a travel nurse for all these years, you tend to um, gravitate to, you know what kind of pay you want. And you go towards that. You don't always get it, but you get some of the perks. For example, if I wanted to go to Hawaii, I know that Hawaii doesn't pay well because that's touristy area and a lot of nurses, they can get to go there. And so the salary is going to be lower. So for me, because I want to take a trip there, a working trip, I don't care about the money. I just want to go there to travel. They give me the hotel, whatever. I'm just giving you an example. You do it that way. But I find that, you know, you live close to home. They have an, a job you're easier, quicker to get it from a travel agency that's doing work in Georgia. And I remember asking the agency I've been working for for so long, why don't they have jobs? Do they have travel assignment in Georgia? And most of them said they don't really like to have jobs here because they don't pay well. And most of the nurses not going to accept that. But now I'm seeing a lot of travel agency are coming into Georgia. And you would think that the employee would say, let me try to give the staff instead of paying the agency rate. But they don't do things the right way or they don't do things the way that we nurses want it to be, they do the opposite. And I think a, a manager explained it to me a long time ago, said that it's easier to get an agency nurse and not paying her the benefit. The benefit is costly to have a nurse on staff. So I guess I just go with the flow and listen and, and keep it moving. I'm agency. So I'm here and I'm looking for, see if I can find a local job that I would be satisfied with. Cause that you got to get everything. You got to get your mind right. You, you literally have to say, I'm just going to go PRN. That way you don't get caught up in the negative, the, the culture. If you know what I mean, keep your peace and your sanity. But I find it very difficult because here in the South, they want much from you, too much. PRN back in the days, and maybe I'm just a dreamer, still thinking about back in the days. When PRN mean PRN, PRN means I give you a schedule and I come to come based on those schedule, not you saying I have to do four weeks or or maybe four shift out of the month. Don't quote me. Four shift out of the month and and a holiday. When back in the days, PRN meant you know they give their staff the shift that they want, then you pick up shifts, and then they usually cancel when their staff wants to work. That's the perks of working on staff. But they don't do that. They, I don't think they cancel. I, don't, I haven't worked, I work PRN in 
are quite local and I haven't seen them cancel you for their staff because most of the staff here in the South, they have other jobs. They have two jobs. So they don't care if the PRN pick it up. It's just the benefit, I guess, the health benefit that became, is complicated, I guess. Anyway, so I was looking around for the right local job. And I find that you might find one that you really want, but the process is so long. Why is it that the agency, you, you um, do all your paperwork and the agency ready to send you to work? Whereas the, the, the hospital or the facility that you're going to hire, that's going to hire you, or you're going to work for them, they take forever. And they're so confused. They ask you three or four times for your, for your um, CPI. They ask you three or four times for your BLS or ACLS. It's just, or even your license. They don't think that they can go and look up your license. They want you to go and copy your license and send, and bring it in to them. So everything is complicated it's very complicated so most say they need nurses and I see their shortage and everything but they take forever to bring you on staff that's what I'm talking about are you having that same difficulty do you think that because you know if you've been traveling for a while, and yes, my suitcase is always packed and it's by the door, but there's sometimes you just want to stay home. You just want to drive to the location and come home. I got a job, and I really wanted this job. I really wanted to work for this company. Two, two incidents happened to me um, while I'm sitting home and apply. One job turn me down. And I kind of figure why. Not because I was anything in my record. Not because um, I, what would I say? Not because my um, credential, not because my resume wasn't up to date or anything. I figure this facility, it was a correctional facility, yes. And it, it was quite far away. As a matter of fact, I was going to sleep in the hotel when I work, if I had gotten that job. It was part of the immigration, working for immigration, but it was a private prison. Anyway, so they turned me down. And I kind of figured, I, I was thinking, what did I do? It was nothing I did. What happened is I went and got a certification. I think that that's what um, they rejected me for because now I know the standard. What is the standard for working in a prison or working in a jail? And they might feel intimidated, you know, because some company may look you up and they see your name and everything and they might see, I think it was in my email when I was, discussing to them and it says I'm proud to be uh, a certified correctional um, help provider and I'm going to talk about that in the next video I've uh, said I was going to talk about getting certified and getting paid so they rejected me fine it was kind of far I was praying because I didn't want to go out my comf go all the way and come back it would be like three hours away from here from where I live so God knows what he do what he does and how he protect you maybe that wasn't for me and that's how I look at my life whenever I'm rejected when I don't get the job it was just not for me it was not for me it wasn't safe for me and so I was protected anyway the second job, I really wanted that one, that one. The first one, it wasn't that I wanted, 
it was PRN. That's why I wanted it. But this second job, I really wanted to work for the company. They're new, they're, they're fresh. So I wanted to work with a company that's just starting out and maybe they're excited and I could bring my experience to the company. But it was all so far away. And I knew that in the beginning. Why? I still apply. The pay was excellent. But when they start asking me, and I had to be honest with myself because I was going to chance it. But I thought about it. It's 70, almost 80 hours away from my house, one way. And I was going to take that job. But sometimes, you know how sometimes you just, oh, I'm going to take this because the money is good. And I said, wait a minute. I thought about this. Do I really want to do this so far and for three days straight? And this is night shift? And you all know, and if you don't know, I have difficulty staying up. So... One way, 80 hours back and forth, night and day, I might not be able to do this job. And so when the lady asked me, I said, only if it was PRN. That means maybe I can chance it, I can schedule and have a breeder so I don't have to go back to work. I don't see myself doing that. But they only wanted full-time. And I would have did full-time if they were a little closer. So I didn't get that job. Here in, in Georgia or, or the South, you have to drive every day for every place. And it seems so far to drive. When I was in Philadelphia, you just catch a um, bus, train, or the car, but we didn't drive as much or even walking. But here, you have to drive. And I can't possibly see how people do two jobs. Because doing two jobs, to me, meant I'm going to make sure I have some day off. And just go from this job to the next. And then I have my day off to rest. But you can't do that here. Because you're driving and you will get to the other one. They all want you to come early. So I didn't, I didn't, but they have another spot and I, they said they'll call whenever. So I'm hoping I get that job. If not, then I'm on the road again, but I'm praying I don't get that. And if it happened, it's meant to be. So that was my thing about getting a job locally. I guess I'm a little spoiled because I'm used to just walking in, getting an interview, and, you know, they make a decision or I make a decision, and we set a date and go. Now everything is on after 2020, everything is on Zoom or phone call. Another thing I found out is in Georgia is who you know, who's going to recommend you. And a lot of people, and I don't blame them, I'm not angry or anything, don't want to re recommend anyone. Because you know, you might recommend somebody and then they give you a bad name. So I get it. So since I'm not in the elite club, I don't know people in higher position I have to do it the hard way and some and I don't mind doing the hard way because they know once they get me I'm loyal so long as they treat me right no hang up the phone in my face when I work with you don't throw me this group um treat me as if I'm nothing you know I'm gonna fill that hole all the time I'm gonna be floating all over the world no consideration. So, I had to stop and think about that one. Anyway, 
So it's who you know. So if you have a friend that know a D-O-N or know a, a nurse manager or no, not even a nurse manager or people, I think it's more like if they know human resource, if they know, if they're in the part of the good old boys club or the good old girls club, then they get in and they get the pay they want. I think that's how it work in the South, I would say. So getting a local job or finding one that you will be satisfied. That has all, check all the boxes and you go to work and you are so happy. First of all, the grass is not greener on the other side. Every job you go is the same situation. So I would tell you to look if you really want to look. You, you always want to look. But if you're happy, just stay where you are because nothing is out there right now. So you're in a better spot. So a lot of nurses are opening to change, doing other things, taking chances, taking risks. So I like that, you know. So I just wanted to say, once again, I came out here consistently so give me a like, subscribe, and leave a comment. Comment, get me up in the YouTube algorithm and say, oh, she must be somebody they listen to. And zoom me up a little bit. Not much, but just a little bit. Have a wonderful day or night in your state or your country.